Good morning, guys. So today we're looking at a sunken slab. This is a small porch top. You've got two doors, one here, and one is around the back over here. And the slab sunk. And you can see they didn't put any steel in here. If you can get a look. See, there's block here, and they didn't drill any rebar into it. They did nothing. So we're gonna take the slab out, see what we have, fill it in with some base rock, and hopefully we'll be able to drill rebar into there, into the building, and into the block, and reinforce it with some wire. They should have put an expansion joint here as well. That's why you get that crack right over here. So we're gonna bust it out and see what we have. Okay, so now that we have all the cement broken out, He's going to come over and drill in the rebar. Yeah. Yeah, you can put one there. You can put one here. Two. And then three over here. That's good. Okay? Yeah, that's good. It's going to give the rebar something to grab to. This rebar is half inch. And we're not going to drill anything into here because this is just a brick facade with wood behind it. So we're not going to drill into that. Wire that down this way, you'll still get the same effect that it won't crack. He did this, this figuring a popular misconception. When you pour thick cement, it'll solve the problem of a poor base. What? What do you say? <laughs> <laughs> However, there's no amount of concrete that you can pour, no matter how thick, that will take effect for a poor sub base. What they did here was they just threw some dirt, they threw some stone, they didn't compact it, they filled it in over two feet and just left it. So this is why this slab failed almost as soon as it was completed. Okay. A lot of concrete contractors believe in the misconception that the more cement you pour, the better off that you'll be. But this is not true. If you have a poor sub base, there is no amount of concrete that will save you from having a failure of a slab. Now on this particular project, like I showed you, they poured concrete from six inches to eight inches thick on a very poor sub base. Now while you can applaud them for pouring the concrete thick and putting wire in it, which I applaud them for the wire at least, at least they tried a little bit, but nothing will make up for a poor sub base if you don't do any compaction and you fill it in with dirt. Now they filled it in with dirt and then threw a little bit of stone on top and poured six to eight inches of cement with wire. Now the issue being is when you do that and you pour that much concrete, you put more weight and more pressure on the loose dirt. So now you're not only on loose material that's not compacted properly, you're now putting extra weight that's not even necessary on the uncompacted fill. So essentially, this slab failed within two to three months of it being poured. This is the third time I've been to the site. I've been to the site twice before to look at it. The first time I went there, it was only about a half inch below the limestone. It had only sunken a little bit. And basically when the people closed on the building and the built my customer as well, they were in the hope that it wouldn't get any worse. Um, over this past winter, it sunk more. I went back to the site and we had a very lengthy conversation about what to do about it. And 
a couple of suggestions that were made were why can't we just pour self-leveling cement and then use a top and bond cement to bring it to the right height well the problem is with those top and bond products is number one they don't really last that long so guaranteeing the longevity of the product is just not there and second of all you're not solving the problem of the sub base being poor and continuing to settle so you can put more weight on the dirt and all you're going to do is push it down even further if you add cement on top of it and the uh, there is a building next door done the exact same way with the slab in a state of failure and that's that slab is actually worse than this one is but I guess the people are not changing it for whatever reason I don't know it's it's not my concern or not my my place to talk about it so I'm just doing what I'm told so what we're going to do is now we've filled in the voids with the broken cement and small pieces of, and stone and we drilled rebar into the block and we're going to put the wire mesh and we're going to pour a four inch slab which is more than acceptable for a porch top the only time we ever pour concrete thicker is in a driveway or where a car or a truck may go uh, four inches with the wire is more than acceptable in New York City first of all four inches is the code and it's more than acceptable with uh, the weather conditions that we face we don't get those extreme extreme cold winters where you're gonna get a severe amount of cracking if you don't pour thicker than four inches well guys I hope that um, this helped you and we will be back tomorrow morning to pour so I'll try to get some filming of that for you and um, how we're going to put the wire mesh in